Hi everyone, I'm Pro Engineering here. Welcome to yet another Tamiya Hornet upgrade. This time we're gonna go over the Ampro Engineering Zero Offset Double Wishbone Front Suspension for the Tamiya Hornet and the Tamiya Grasshopper. So I've done um, a couple of these installations. Uh, the one we're gonna focus on here is in fact the Zero, uh, zero Offset Front Suspension. So the Zero Offset is referring to the spacing of the base of the shock. So in this case here, uh, this car does have an upgraded front uh, shock absorber. This is a UG unit. Um, everything I'm going to talk about is going to work the exact same way for something that's upgraded like this. Maybe one of the um, uh, one of the CRP units, uh, as well as the stock front springs. So you can see here that the base is in fact using the uh, the stock Tamiya uh, metal brackets. If I can zoom in a little bit more, you can take a look at that. Uh, so this is exactly what you would find on a bone stock Hornet as well. So this upgrade will take the exact same geometry that you've got already in existence and simply mount it to the top of the A-arm. The zero offset front suspension um, is interchangeable for both the left and the right. You can see that the geometry on the top and on the bottom is identical. When it comes to the 20 millimeter offset version, and again, the 20 millimeter offset means the uh, mounting point here would be at zero and the mounting point here relative to the original is 20 millimeters lower. This version here does have a, uh, a little stamp here that says R. The left, of course, will have an L. Um, so these are unique to each side. The 10 millimeter offset, it takes all this geometry here, removes it, and allows the front suspension to mount in line with the A-arm. Um, you can mount a regular shock absorber. This is the cantilever setup here. Uh, however, uh, unlike this zero offset version, the left and the right, once again, they are unique. So now what I'm going to talk about is how I recommend the suspension is installed. However, this is just a recommendation. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you can do differently here. So, you know, definitely uh, you know, listen to what I have to say. And then if you feel like you have a better way of doing it, by all means, please do so. So the suspension kit comes with both front A-arms. You have a um, the upper pivot that I call it. Now there's two versions of this. There's this version right here, and there is this version right here. Main differences are, this is the upper component that you want to use if you have a very light runner, or maybe even a shelf queen. This version right here is the one you want to use if you want to jump out the third story building, a window of your uh, your apartment building. So this one here is way better in terms of uh, rigidity because the load is placed di uh, directly on this axis right here, which makes this a very stout piece, as opposed to this one here, which you can kind of tell has some very uh, peculiar... A peculiar geometry here and the reason for this geometry is so that we can remove the body here and when the uh, this version is installed basically what it does is it sits down right here on top of the grasshopper body mounts like so and this will allow you to reinstall the body without a single modification to anything Okay, so if you take a look right here, you can see that the uh, the uh, peg here sticks out of uh, from underneath the body. We'll put the ball in right there, and we've installed this front suspension without a single cut to the body. The alternative is to where'd you go? Is to mount this guy right here. Okay, you'd mount the ball end on top of this point right here, and then you would route the upper link out from here to the uh, to the upright. Now the geometry is much better like this um, and it would end up looking like my inspiration the Panda Cyclone where you are going to have this cut out in the body. Okay, It does work better, it is stronger, but if cosmetics um, are what you're after, then you want to go with the other version. So in this case, I am going to go with the cosmetic version, but pretty much everything is going to be identical. So, uh, the last parts that we have are the uprights. Uh, 
Um, I have a number of variations on the A-arms, even for the uh, Midnight Pumpkin. However, all of my uprights are identical. They are, again, there is a left and a right, if you can see right here, we do specify it left and right. Um, and uh, that is basically all for the kit. These do come on a sprue. In fact, the sprue for most of these sets has both the uh, the uh, the more durable version of the upper link as well as the cosmetic upper link. They are attached on the back side. It's a little bit hard to see here. Actually, you can see it, the little white dot. Um, what that is is actually glossy. Uh, so the colors uh, that are available on Shapeways, there's quite a few. I mean, you got red, blue, yellow, pink, purple, green, and so on and so on. They're actually all white. It is a... Um, uh, a laser sintered nylon. So these are, you know, these are quite durable. Okay. I know people tend to think, you know, uh, 3d printed parts are you know, made out of butter, uh, but these are in fact, very, very, very durable. Um, they're dyed. So any area that you're going to trim like a sprue, you are going to have maybe a little white spot of the actual white nylon. Um, I do my best to try and place the sprue in areas where it's not going to be visible. So in this case, it is on the back over here, but just note that 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 will be a side effect of the sprue. And the reason why they're done this way is that it's actually a lot cheaper on Shapeways to have a number of plastic components all tied together on a single sprue. If the colors available uh, aren't really to your liking, select the white polished. These take to paint absolutely beautifully. Uh, this is about two or three coats of low gloss black. It has a, a kind of a matte sheen, which I was after. Uh, grab Superfly again. If you can see here, Superfly has got several more coats of black uh, matte paint, and it does give it a much, much shinier effect. Um, if you want it to be a lot smoother, a little bit of sanding and it'll shine it right up. Uh, you can kind of see here, this is also uh, nylon. I didn't even bother sanding this. This is a car that I use for racing. I gave it a coat of primer and shot it with two or three coats of Tamiya. I think it was PS2 red. So you, you do see the, um, the surface texture here. However, with uh, a nice filler primer, some color sanding, this can look like glass. I've seen uh, quite a few of these SLS painted uh, Nia, I'm sorry, uh, nylon bodies look out of this world. Onto the build. I have some hardware that we're gonna need for this. Uh, what you're gonna see is we have a, this is, I believe it's a 4.8 millimeter ball. Um, and uh, the, the holes on these here are specifically designed for M3 screws. But you know, the, um, you know, there's a little bit extra material on this. So if you've got something standard that'll work, that's fine. I built these using as many uh, Tamiya metric parts as possible, but you know, use what you got in your toolbox. What you will notice is that this hole here is far too big to actually thread into. So the, the screw will just go right through it. Um, make sure that you do use a nut on the backside because it's not intended to be load bearing member at all. Load bearing member, excuse me. Uh, to hold this member uh, in place, in the stock Tamiya Grasshopper mounts, you are going to want to use one of the shorter Tamiya self-tapping screws. I think these are eight millimeter. Um, it's very important that you do not use the longer ones because what's gonna happen is you're gonna try and thread it into this hole here. It's gonna bottom out on the plastic that's on the back side and either snap off the post or punch a hole straight through the chassis. So please use one of the shorter ones. If you don't have any, just cut the front four millimeters off of, uh, of a longer screw with your Dremel and you'll be all set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this component here and we'll move on from there. Now the upper link has been installed. You can see we've got the ball ends right here and it's threaded into the stock grasshopper front shock mount, uh, body mount, excuse me. Uh, if you do have a grasshopper, this is gonna require a little bit of modification. On the Hornet, you're not gonna have to pick up an X-Acto knife, a Dremel for nothing on this install. On a grasshopper, because we do have the, uh, the ABS body, I'm sorry, that's a polystyrene body, you are gonna have to make some changes here. So what you have to do is shave off a tad of the inside of the grasshopper's body posts. Now be very careful about this because there's not much room to work with. You may actually have to shave off some of these towers as well. And then you will have to make a very small notch on the side of the body 
to clear this. Um, the body fits on a grasshopper um, right up against this surface, so you are going to make a cut about two millimeters tall and about six millimeters long to make this tab stick out. It should be very unobtrusive, but unfortunately, there has to be an upper link for the grasshopper. Um, and unless we, you know, take the geometry way up inside of here, um, it's going to be, um, you know, pretty simple to make that little modification to the grasshopper. Next, let's go ahead and pull off the uh, front suspension and prepare that. So the uh, arms are off of the uh, the Hornet now, and what you're going to see, um, mainly this is this is our important part here. Okay, this little U bracket that uh, is in probably every single Tamiya ever made. Uh, normally used to go right here in this A-arm, and if you look at it from about this angle here, there's a little tiny post, oh, sorry, it's a little blurry there, there's a little tiny post right there that aligns it, and that post exists right here as well. And as I mentioned, it is on both sides, because these will um, be able to be on both sides of the, uh, the Hornet. So we're going to take this bracket here, get our screw, and this is the exact same one that I took out of the A-arm. Uh, maybe a shorter one would work better, but I unfortunately am completely out of them. So I'm set the red straight in. Um, now, I didn't bother uh, tapping the hole at all. I mean, this is a self-tapping screw. Nylon has absolutely no problem uh, accepting the threads here. So we're going to test with that now. If I can take a look right there, you can see that this U-bracket has now butted up against the post and will no longer flop around. You see it kind of locks it in there. So let's snug it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, you know, don't go crazy tightening these down. This is nylon. Um, just like ABS, it, it will snug up, but you don't want to strip it out. Okay. So that's installed there. And I also wanted to mention one thing, you know, this arm looks way shorter than this one. We are forgetting one thing. There's also an upright that belongs here. Okay. Uh, and that is where your extra length comes from. So these are very, very close to being the same offset uh, in terms of width. Uh, the uh, zero millimeter offset front suspension that I have here uh, does stick out a few millimeters, maybe about two or three millimeters per side. So it's, it's basically negligible. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this on the other part and we will then install our screw pins. These arms are all ready to go. We've got the, the brackets installed on both and just make sure that you do have one for each side. So if you install it on uh, on the same side, you're, you know, just have to reinstall the bracket. Um, as these are laser um, laser centered, uh, oftentimes there, there is residue left in the hole. So what we wanna do is simply clean those out. Uh, these are designed to be a three millimeter hole. So I'm gonna take a three millimeter drill bit and uh, I am wearing safety glasses. I urge you to do the same as well. And any uh, younger viewers, please have some help with this from your parents. Okay. Uh, next, we want to do the same thing to the screw pin. I'm sorry, to the uh, the hole that is in the upright. So same kind of deal here. Right. Now, it's pretty important that we do the same for the screw that the upright goes into. Now, there are two variations of the uprights. Uh, you've got the older style like this, which has a, a steel bar that goes through the hole and locks with the set screw at the rear. You also have the modern version of the Hornet, which has a screw pin. It's going to work the exact same way. In this case here, I do want to make sure that this has um, freedom to move around in here, and we can see that it doesn't want to go in. Again, we're talking about something that um, was 3D printed. Now, this particular pin, I'm just going to show you, for example, I'm going to try and push it into the hole that I just cleaned out, and it's it binds. The reason for this is that this shaft is a precision ground shaft. A screw pin is not precision and has plenty of slop in here. So what I'm going to do is make sure that we have a little more room on the knuckle side, so I'm going to drill that hole out with a 3.2 millimeter drill bit. Okay, and now we're gonna see that this slots right in there, no problem whatsoever, okay? So these are ready to go. I'm gonna go grab some screw pins and begin the install. 
I went ahead and assembled this side of the suspension. Now you can see by the L right here that this is going to be the left side on the Hornet. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just kind of put this guy together for you. I went ahead and uh, basically I put the the UG front shock on this uh, vehicle. And although I'm sure many of you just have the stock front shock, uh, the springs, again, there's not going to be really any difference. You're going to have this this metal bracket here already. So just go ahead and install the, the kit supplied plastic mount and then thread in your friction shock. Now using the right side upright, I'm going to go ahead and just place it here. Um, these are Tamiya screw pins. Uh, they can be found in just Tamiya kits spanning decades. Um, I simply typed in screw pin on eBay and uh, went ahead and just ordered kind of a generic kit. And then I also went ahead and there we go. Sorry, I just dremeled the end of this and it was a little bit stiff to get in there. Uh, I think the set I got had mostly 40 millimeter long screw pins, so pretty long. Um, I go ahead and just get them as long as humanly possible so that um, should an application come up where I need a longer one, I can, I've got them. Uh, and if I need a shorter one, I can simply cut them down. If, I, if I'd gotten shorter ones, I'd be a little bit out of luck. So that is installed. Uh, you can go ahead and use a three millimeter roll pin and just put some uh, C clips on the sides. I'm not really a fan of roll pins, um, but uh, they they definitely are an option here. Let's make sure that the knuckle is in the correct orientation. You're probably looking at this and going, uh, you know, your Hornet's a little dirty. Well, to be honest, this particular Hornet has been in service since I got it at a yard sale in. I'm sorry, it wasn't at a yard sale. It actually, was I bought it off uh, somebody down the street from my grandparents' house in 1991, and it has been in operation ever since. Okay, that's installed. Uh, and again, if you had the newer style Hornet that has a screw pin, you would just thread it in from the top and be all set. The last piece we have to put in is the ball end. So let's go ahead and just place it there, and we're going to thread it in right there. I didn't bother um, tapping this. This is just, you know, this is just the, the plastic here. And what I like to do is kind of go back and forth. And what this does is this cuts the plastic and threads it, uh, threads the machine screw in as you tighten it up. What this also does is it relieves any additional stress on the plastic, um, which could uh, maybe, you know, cause premature failure. Okay. I think, did I mess, oh there we go, okay, there we are, I thought I did something in backwards. So these look good to me, and we can go ahead and install them in the car. Now there's going to be really nothing different from installing these uh, versus the stock ones. As usual, make sure that you do have your turnbuckles out, otherwise you're not going to be able to get those things out easily. You can see this is sticking out a bit, I'll, yeah, I'll probably trim that off a little bit later. Okay, let's put this in here. All right, now one thing I do want to point out to you, you'll notice that um, it seems to want to hit the chassis right here. Uh, this is designed so that this entire length of the A-arm is at its maximum material condition. That basically means um, there's going to be next to no play when you install this. I did this on purpose, so we can go ahead and just kind of push down and it will snap right into place. Uh, if you find that there's uh, far too much friction in here, please go right ahead and just file down the front. I figure I might as well leave a little extra material so that it can be snug versus having a uh, lateral play. So this is nice and sturdy. So that's in there. Where'd the other one go? There it is. Put the other one in as well. Put our bracket back in. Remember folks, always back thread your screws here so that we don't screw up all the holes in the, uh, in the chassis. For any beginners out there, this is a very soft ABS tub uh, chassis on these cars. So basically when the screw stops, when the screw stops, it's it's basically tightened up and you're you're good to go. All right, there we have. Oh, the screw's missing. Where did you go? Anyway, 
Okay, so that is all in there. Let's flip it back over. So our shocks are installed. And we can do a little test here now, make sure that nothing is in fact binding. Okay, all looks good, good in the world here. Now, in most cases, we'd be finished. Except here we are dealing with an um, with a double wishbone front suspension. Therefore, we are going to have to connect this ball end to this ball end right here. Now, regardless if you use this upper link or the more robust upper link that we talked about earlier, this little guy here, you're still going to have to do this. So what we need is a ball end, I'm sorry, excuse me, a ball cup and some threaded rod, or maybe you already have a turnbuckle. So go ahead and simply measure the distance between this ball and this ball here, and cut down your turnbuckles to fit. Uh, I'm using a three millimeter threaded rod. Upper links are cut, and I think now is a good time to probably install these finally. I did want to mention again, you know, this, uh, this geometry is a bit peculiar. This is a prototype, so I do, um, I do have a new one whose geometry is a little bit thicker over here. I, I changed some some uh, weaker areas because I, I do, you know, kind of make a, a bit of a, a destructive testing on these parts because I, I just want to make sure that they're going to be um, that they're going to be good. Uh, you'll notice that there is quite a bit of play, um, but just don't go crazy with them because you know you you will snap them. This is not the most robust geometry in the world. If you wanted, uh, if you want this to be a, uh, quite a bit stiffer. I definitely recommend the. Oh, I'm sorry, blocking the camera. I definitely recommend the other version. All right, let's just put this in here. Not easy to do this, by the way, through a viewfinder. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There you go. Okay. And lastly, we'll put the last one in here. I did mention earlier that I, I, I said that the threaded rod was going to be 19 millimeters. Apparently, I was on crack because they were like 12. So, I may have been thinking of a different car. All right, installed. We can reconnect our tie rods here for the steering. Um, I don't know if the geometry has been screwed up too much here. Let's take a look. I mean, I haven't touched them from, you gotta be kidding me. They look perfect. If I put these down, it's going to do what? It'll pull them in. Let's go out a little bit on both sides. Have a little bit of toe in, since that actually makes a difference now. Put one tire on. If anybody's curious, I'll probably get questions on this too, uh, what the what the rim is. I, I'm pretty darn sure it's Proline. These rims are ancient. They've been on this car since, like I mentioned, since I got it in uh, 91 or so. Okay, let's put that on there. We now have double wishbone front suspension. Let's give it a push, shall we? Ooh, that's cool. Now again, the results are gonna vary depending on what shocks you have. These have roughly 10 millimeters of travel. I think the stock ones have 10 millimeters unless you take the spacers out, then they have way more. The, uh, the geometry is also compromised because of the cosmetic piece. The other version has a longer upper control link, so it goes from this uh, this threaded, um, sorry, excuse me, this um, this ball end on the upright all the way to the ball end on the inside here of that member. And what that does is it creates a more equal length upper and lower control arm. You're probably thinking this is not a great view of uh, how to install the body, but I do want to point out how the body clears this upper link. So the compromise in durability and the compromise in geometry all plays in because now it completely clears. It's very hard to see, but there is in fact a gap between the ball cup and the headlight. So it does all fit very tightly in there. Now to recap, the left one, we installed our double wishbone front suspension, and the right one is our bone stock Hornet. So looking at them head on, I'm gonna try and align them as best I can here. Okay, so the tires look about right. Compress this guy. And let's compress this guy here. Okay, not too bad. 
Now remember, even though I did use these UG shocks, this suspension setup is specifically designed for a stock application. So if you do in fact have this exact same car, none of the shock, I should call it a friction shock, geometry or mechanical components has to change. All of it is going to work perfectly. So what's a suspension upgrade without taking the car for a spin? Uh, I just, you know, went outside in the front yard, made a little ramp here and just kind of buzzed it around. The suspension upgrade that we've done here really does help the car's handling. It helps it uh, landing from jumps. Uh, this is a pretty basic suspension upgrade and we are still talking about those really old UG front shocks. However, I feel that the overall uh, benefit of this upgrade is going to be just about the same even with the stock suspension upgrade. Here the car is just driving around. You know, it does retain its Hornet characteristics, um, you know, even as far as attracting dogs uh, from the entire neighborhood. Pretty common occurrence for that Hornet, unfortunately. Anyway, this is my best attempt at slow motion, so I, you know, did what I could here. You are able to see how the car lands. The suspension is working very fluidly, very nicely. And overall, you are going to notice that when the car hits the ground, there is so much less bump steer. I'm really happy with this upgrade. I hope you are too. Well, that was fun. I love driving the Hornet and this new front suspension. For me, it, it, it lands better. It uh, steers better. It really does you know, quite a bit better than the original car does, but doesn't lose that charm. And more importantly, there's no holes, there's no cutting, there's no chopping, there's no nothing to permanently damage the Hornet chassis. So I'm, I'm really a big fan of that. Please subscribe to my channel. I've got so many more. Let me, let me take a look at this here. See this 3D printed drawer. Okay, see this is actually empty. You have no idea how much 3D printed stuff that we have done here. We've got battery doors. This is the, the frame for Superfly. I've got battery. Jeez, I've got prototype stuff in here. I've got my... Check this out. This is pretty cool. We can go over this eventually. GMC front end for the Cloudbuster. Direct bolt-in. Ooh, and notice the grill. Very nice. It has emblems as well. So, I mean, I've got just some more suspension arms to cover so much stuff. You'll find a link to Shapeways at the end of this video. And please like me on Facebook. I am Ampro Engineering. Uh, you'll also find me on Instagram at Ampro Engineering.